There's been a murder. Surely I should use this time to thoroughly search for clues. Six little sailor boys. This is getting worrisome. Jesus. Each time when I do that, he says something different, so. Okay. You had no right to speak to me that way at breakfast. Didn't I? It's still morning and you're drunk already. Thanks to you. Doctor, as you yourself must know, blaming others for one's own faults is a favorite trick of the alcohol. You cloak yourself in religion, but you're the most unchristian woman I've ever met. You're a devil. A devil, do you hear me? I'm certain everyone. Eavesdropping is impolite, Mr. Narricot, but under the circumstances, I'm glad you overheard. <laughs> what if I was just walking out? That, that's your problem. Enjoying the break in the weather, Miss Brent. This island has only two types of weather, gloomy and slightly less gloomy. I'm taking advantage of this brief, slightly less respite. You were pretty hard on Dr. Armstrong. No more than he deserved. I only wonder that he didn't kill more people operating drunk than that one woman Owen mentioned. Please, was it? Armstrong was trying to help you at breakfast. I do not require his help. Or yours. The Lord is mindful of his own. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror at night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. You are the next logical victim, Miss Brent. I disagree. Owen's bee sting might be many things. One of my knitting needles, perhaps. Even a hypodermic needle. I suspect the doctor has one of those in his medical manner. Besides, I'm confident that the angel of death will pass me over. Anything else that might be important? I can't vouch for its importance, but something rather annoying has happened. What? Someone has taken my grey wool. All of it. I won't be able to finish this shawl without it. Good day, Miss Brent. Okay, let's... Um, yeah, this is gonna be like five hours. Let me go up the stairs. Up, up, up the stairs. Okay, so if I go here. Go away, please. I don't want to talk to anyone. Oh, keyhole. Let's look through the keyhole. And he pulls out a little drinky drink. And he drinks the drinky drink. I guess he feels better. Okay. Um. The judge is in here. Can't be much fun playing alone. The doctor seems uninterested in snooker at the moment. Besides, I find the game relaxes me. I can think more clearly. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry you think I let you down. Not at all, my boy. My criticism was for Mr. Owen's benefit. I see no reason to put all of my eggs in one basket, then show the contents of that basket to him. I'm working along several lines at the moment. I'll give you a game. I'd rather continue on my own if you don't mind. Besides, you have more important things to do, I'm sure, than knock a few balls into holes. Do you have any suggestions for me? It's the first decent weather we've had since yesterday morning. I'd take advantage of that to signal the mainland or try and escape the island. I appreciate your candor, Judge. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go... Let's see if anybody's in here. Living room. Okay, nobody is. Uh, da -da 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 -da
and three more. That's because he's more kinder than you, is it? He he he. So we're missing one more person. I have a good feeling I don't know where that guy is. Floor. Hmm. Hmm. Look at the beehive. Let's see if he's there. And that Philip guy. Hello. He's a Philip. Okay. <laughs> That's. I think the floor's down here. I think. No. I'm surprised it's still there. Because you would think a boat would sink. I would get it for the first couple of things, but I think it should sink. Mm -hmm. You just keep your distance. I'm not your enemy. As as may be, I'm trusting no one. Did you discover any? Perhaps I did, but I think I'll keep it to myself, if you don't mind. Okay. The storm is brewing again. Quickly, someone! Miss Brent was screaming. It sounded like it came from the apiary. Well, why would she be in the apiary? Okay, we all know this. Everybody knew it in the game. It's clear as day. She was going to be the next one. But was it her fault for not paying attention? Yes, it was her fault for not paying attention. She didn't take the hints. So I guess she cannot be the killer. Horrible. Horrible. Those welts on her face. Horrible way to die. Will you gentlemen carry her back to her room? I don't feel quite myself. It's because you were drinking. Six little sailor boys playing with a hive. 
Bumblebee stung one and then there were five. Another rhyme fulfilled. But why? Why? Surely you don't believe all that rot about her innocence. No, but she was rightfully afraid of bees. Why would she come out here of all places? Maybe Owen carried her from the front patio. In broad daylight. How could he be certain no one would see? And it'll take both of us to carry her back. There is something no one's thought of. What if Owen has an accomplice? Good point. Chapter 6. Five little sailor boys going in for law. One got in chancery, then there were four more. Oh yeah, and the person that's saying these chapters. One more of us acquitted. Sounds like Too him. Late. So she wasn't passed over after all. I could have told her that wasn't likely to happen. It's almost more than I can bear to stay in the house. Five gone now. Five lying in their rooms under those sheets. Cold. Forever cold now. Steady on, Vera. We can't lose our grip now. Bleak House by Charles Dickens is a scathing indictment of the Chancery Court until it was merged with the Common Law Courts in 1873. At its worst, cases of estates and inheritances could carry on for the entire lifetimes of those involved. To get caught in Chancery Court literally might have meant one could die there. I can't help but feel that Mr. Owen has that particular fate reserved for me. My time would appear to have come. Miss Brent refused protection, at least what mortal hands could provide. Will you, Judge? Not at all. I welcome it. My days on this earth may be few at this point. All the more reason I relish every one. But it was the participants in the cases whom the Chancery Court often crushed, not the judges. An interesting point, Miss Claythorne. I'll certainly have to think that over. There is another point I'd like to make. There usually is. One of us is a murderer. Everything must be done to safeguard the four of us who are innocent. Mr. Lombard, you have a gun. I'll be damned if I'll give up my revolver. Happily, there are enough of us still alive to force the issue if necessary. Oh, very well, then, since you've got it all taped out. It's in the drawer of the table by my bed. I'll get it. I'll just keep you company if you don't mind. Okay. Mm. Let's go check up on them instead of talking to them. Doctor, hmm. Snooker, Doctor? I'm not sure I could give you much of a game. Hands. Hands are a little shaky. But I'll try if you like. Excellent. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's the only time you can talk to him around there. So let's go upstairs. Let's go up and up and up and up. Okay, so it goes like this. This one? It was in that table, I tell you. I'm going to search you whether you like it or not. You fool! Can't you see the lock's been forced? Aragon, will you help me search it? I won't resist. Mm. Nothing. Now it's your turn. Not even a stray bee. And you, Mr. Narakot? Go right ahead. Mm. Nothing. That leaves Armstrong. The judge, or Miss Claythorne. The killer could have simply hidden it somewhere. I'm gonna search everyone anyway, and if it's hidden, I'll find it. I'm starting in here, if Mr. Lombard has no objections. Help yourself. Try not to make too much of a mess. There's no Rogers anymore to clean up. <laughs> Stay back, I'm warning you. Vera may be taken with your conversation, Mr. Narakata. 